So welcome to another episode of the Rediscovery Channel, where each time we try to tell each other a story that the other person may not or uh, may or may not have heard of. Uh, today it's uh, myself, Stilger, and my best friend or good friend, Ivor. And uh, we're talking uh, this time, I want to talk about something you probably haven't heard about. Um, and it's uh, it's actually about um, a story about Alessund, Norway. Have you ever heard of the place? Oh, what's it called? It's Alessund. So that's like the A with the little uh, O on top of it. So Alessund, uh, A-L-E-S-U-N-D, Norway. Um, and um, it is a, yeah, I went there last year actually on vacation with my family. Um, it's, it's a nice area of the country in the West Coast. Uh, a lot of beautiful nature there. You got, you got glaciers. You got uh, the Trollstigen, which is like this really steep road. It's crazy, crazy steep uh, that I drove up through. Um, and you get some some just majestic landscapes over there. Uh, but the plane landed in, in this city, uh, which used to be um, actually a very poor city. just a fisherman's town um with uh, mostly wooden wooden houses um where people were uh known to be very religious devout religious um and um one person that was living there uh, a respected fisherman and uh devout christian was called Anders Noor so it's Anders Noor A N D E R S N O R um and he, he lived with his family in one of these small wooden houses uh, that had that had been passed down through generations. Um, and um, the story takes place actually in uh, in uh, the the winter of 1904, which was a very cold and stormy winter. Um, and um, um, what happened was um, at this place is is uh, something that um, yeah well there's no real explanation for it and it's it's interesting because for this mystery um, actually a lot of reason a lot of it seems to indicate that this was actually a true story um, so um, Anders was uh, visited as he says by an angel. Um, the day before, uh, before, and he said, the angel told him that uh, there would be a, a huge fire, um, and uh, but that he should remain in his house, uh, leave all the furniture in his house uh, because everything inside the house would remain untouched, um, and uh, he would be okay, but everything else would get consumed by the fire. So. Um, so now in, in the night of uh, January 23rd, 1904, um, there was a, a piercing scream echoing through the streets, uh, waking people up. And, um, and there was a fire that started in, uh, in, the, in a factory. Um, and um, because it was so windy and because these were all old wooden houses built closely together, the, the fire was quickly spreading so now the fire uh, team, they, they actually, the, the department tried to use all these techniques like tearing down houses to create a, a, a wall where nothing else would, where the flames wouldn't be able to come through. Um, but nothing happened. So the fire kept spreading, kept spreading. Uh, and as the virus came closer, uh, being the, the devout religious person that he was, he, uh, he decided to stay in his house praying. And, and there's neighbors as they fled, they, they actually have a witness that he was still in the house um, and he refused to leave. And, you know, because because these houses were closely built together and they were all made out of wood, the, the temperature of the fire got so high, it's basically like a, like an oven, a chimney, that all the houses just kept catching fire. Like even if the flames weren't touching because it got so extremely hot, um, everything caught fire. Um, and um, basically, 
what happened was is um, that um, that yeah, his house was the only house that survived, and um, uh, and he was fine. Like the like everything outside of the house was was completely destroyed. Like ten thousand people, over ten thousand people were um, were homeless. Homeless. Um, yeah. And um, but his house was fine. And um, so, yeah, so which is interesting because right now, like his house is the only house from that period that still exists uh, and everything else has been re newly rebuilt, which makes the house the, the, the actually very looks very nice. Uh, but it's it's still a museum and you can have a look there and you can walk around and uh, and see what it's like. Uh, it's run by a church. Um, but um, yeah, basically uh, what they did is they rebuilt a whole town using um, something called the, the Jugendstil, which is like a youth style German, um, which is like very nice. It looks very nice. It's, uh, it's a modern kind of uh, architecture, um, but it goes back to like historical uh, folk store, uh, folklore. Uh, and it's inspired by nature and has a lot of symbolism. So you have quite a few, uh, few interesting uh, buildings in the area. Um, and it, it, it looks all very nicely laid out. So I, I had a great time just uh, walking around the town, but it's, it's not that big, to be honest. Um, but uh, the, the, the house still exists. And there are so many people in that town that can uh, verify that, yes, um, you know, Anders was still at his house and uh, he did talk to people and he did mention that he was to remain and he refused to leave. Uh, and even the, the, the head of the fire department con con uh, confirms as well uh, that this is a true story. Um, and yeah, it's just one of those things. I know it's a very, it's a very short story, but I thought it was interesting because um, it was like a more modern day miracle because a lot of the miracles that we know of are are a lot older um but this one is uh um quite new and there's quite a few people that confirm you know uh, confirm the story some of which were alive uh not that long ago still um basically that was my story so it's a very short one um and i uh, just wanted to to share it because i was in alasun last year and I, I come, came across uh, across this, uh, and and I thought it was just interesting to uh, to find out that uh, yeah, that stuff like this is still happening. Um, and I thought it was cool that he, uh, you know, that he preserved in his faith um, and was you know out there in his house while the fires around him were like completely destroying everything of the city. And uh, for some reason, his uh, his house remained completely unscathed. So yeah, and you know, I'm not. From, I, I've never heard of this uh, story before or this mm. place. But you know, if if it were me, um, you know, most people would not just sit in something like that and wait for the fire to come. Um, you know, we've had situations like that in the United States, like fires in, I think, uh, like in the 1800s and the early 1900s, fires in uh, California, I think like Los Angeles, I think Los Angeles and uh, Chicago, different places where huge chunks of the city just burned down because the fire started and things were made out of wood and close together. And those were very serious events. And you normally, you know, they, they did the same kind of stuff, demolishing houses uh, to keep the flames from spreading. Um, and, you know, back then, there's not cars, there's not uh, fire hydrants, or at least not the same way that we would have now. So it's much harder to deal yeah, with. Yeah, it's basically bucket lines that, that they would use and tearing down houses. Yeah, in the wake yeah. of the fire so uh, so it's it's very irregular for somebody to just sit and uh you know wait for that to come like uh unless they want to die if it was me um i mean yeah if it was me i would if i heard from and i mean like the really the only reason i would have to have like some kind of supernatural thing in order to make me sit in 
and wait for something like that because fire is not even like a good way to die. That's one of the worst ways you can die. Yeah. So well, he, he met, he, there's a description of like the angel he saw and it was a, like a highly supernatural um, experience he had. So yeah. Otherwise, you're not just going to sit there with something no. like that and be like, oh, this is fine. Although yeah, there is and a and meme he, he wasn't like he was, he was definitely <laughs> scared and he was praying, uh, but he did remain in the house. And uh, because, yeah, definitely you don't want to get uh, burned alive. It's probably one of the worst ways to go, I would think. Definitely. So, so yeah. yeah, I mean, not that any way to go is particularly great, but that's definitely one of the worst. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, that that was my story. I, I thought I would include some pictures of the the architecture of the town nowadays with this Jugendstil, which is actually one of the few modern architecture styles that I think is yeah, it's pretty good. One uh, of the only modern architectural styles that's not complete rubbish. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, I hate modern architecture as well. It just looks like boxes. You know, it's like board cubes but with less detail. But I, um, I actually, I think the last, the last, in my view, the last type of architecture that was actually good and original and looks cool is Art Deco, which I think uh, mainly just existed here in the United States. It may have been, it may be over there too in a little bit, but like Art Deco was a style in the 1920s. Oh, which is so, like Chicago and stuff, right? Isn't that like a lot of Art Deco over there? Um... I don't, I don't know. I, I haven't. I'm been looking at it now. It's kind of, it's kind of like Gotham City kind of uh, vibes to it. Or is it so, just a... well, Art Deco is uh, was partly ex inspired by um, ancient Egypt, like the classical Egyptian styles, because in the early 1900s they were starting to, they were starting to excavate more of the tombs and. Um, you know, people were finding out about it. I mean, like Europeans uh, have been interested in Egypt for a good long time since the Roman times, you know, like you had Romans that were going there to to see the temples and like, oh, this is so cool. Kind of like weeaboos today, you know, that yeah. are like really big on Japan. But yeah, it's partly inspired. They took they took some inspiration from uh, ancient Egyptian architecture and then. I don't know what the other components were from, but it was kind of a fusion style. I might I might do something on that eventually. Um, but yeah, after Art Deco, we got more into like Bauhaus influenced stuff and uh, brutalism, you know, kind of Soviet communist stuff. So today we we have not everything looks pretty bad that's being constructed now, pretty much, but. Lot yeah, I think uh, whatever happened to Gothic, you know, like, well, why did we give up? Like, if you look at modern churches versus the old ones, like, um, why does everything look so drab and compared to to what we have had back in the day? So, like yeah, Gothic. like the, the, the most modern uh, building, I would say that is. Um, um, is still good looking. Um, is uh, the church in Barcelona, I would say, um, the Sagrada Familia, which I think you've been to as well, right? Uh, no, I didn't go to Barcelona, but I know what you're talking about, La Familia Sagrada. I think that what's the full name of it? La Iglesia I think it's, uh, de la the Sagra, Familia. Sagrada, Sagrada Familia, I, I, yeah, which was. Yeah. Uh, which they began constructing it in uh, in 1882, hmm. and then it was um, it was uh, finished like 140 years later. But like name one building since then, like except I guess a couple of skyscrapers that that you know comes close to that. Yeah, and, yeah, you yeah. Well, any? um, the the uh, the Coptic community in Egypt they actually built a new big church that was pretty awesome looking because okay. CC is trying to give uh, you know like uh, make it look like he's supporting them yeah. um, it's kind of a it's kind of a half-hearted support I actually uh, think CC is not even a real Muslim I think he's like a ethno-nationalist that's more inspired by the uh, 
the pharaohs, like looking at some of the stuff that he's done. But he has, because of the religious and cultural composition of the country, he's got to deal with the clay that he's been given. But yeah, the Coptic uh, community, you know, great pharaohs uh, people, they still make some cool looking churches. Like they always, anytime they build something new, it looks awesome. Um, but as far as like uh, Europeans go, I think uh, our, our architecture, like everything that's being done now, just about everything has its roots in the Bauhaus movement, which we talked about like in the Weimar Republic video. And I've been doing some some research into uh, into the into architecture, you know, because like I'm also I kind of like uh, I'm also interested in the 1920s, which looks like a, it would have been a really fun time. Um, and I, it looks to me like my current understanding is that the, the Art Deco movement was one of our last bursts of original creativity as far as architecture goes now everything is either being designed just for uh, strictly utilitarian purposes or to just to be ugly like so much of what's being done now is just ugly even the statues and stuff that are getting put out in front of buildings it's like modern art that doesn't look like anything um the artwork that's being hung on the walls and stuff like at the city center like even even um, the other day, my son and I, we just we we did our workout at the city center, and we were coming out, and he's like, "Oh, what is this garbage?" Because there was there, like this modern art hanging on the the walls of the stairwell and stuff. So like our whole uh, culture is going through a period of degradation. I think it's on purpose. I mean, we, we've talked about this before, but like, uh, yeah, did the Bauhaus school uh, is definitely at the root for the degenerate architecture that's dominating everything now. I think if we had like a Christian revival, like a real Christian revival, that would purge away a lot of this stuff, you know? And like I've said before, like you and me, we, we come from uh, different types of Protestant denominations. Uh, and I think like in America, Baptist, most of us are, are either like from Baptist or, or like Pentecostal roots. We really could learn from like the Orthodox people, like the Greek Orthodox and the Coptic Orthodox, because whenever whenever they build a new building, they make it look awesome. They adhere to their uh, ancient traditions. And I think we also need to be getting back to that kind of stuff. And as far as like you said, what happened to the Gothic? Um, one thing I know from when I was in college is that the the Gothic architecture was replaced by neoclassical, which was like when they got back to looking at the old classical, like pre-Byzantine Roman era stuff, some of which is still around. And they were like, man, we should be cool like the Romans again. They were our ancestors. So they started building uh, neoclassical, which is like a, uh, a rehashing of the traditional Roman designs. And of course, eventually that went into Rococo during the 1700s, which is you know, really detailed, really elaborate. I saw a lot of that stuff when I was in Spain. I'm sure you've seen a lot of it too, where they have like all these uh, de designs on the walls, like raised designs, but then they also will paint everything, really detailed painting the ceilings and stuff. Um, and that's, you know, and, and that goes along with Rococo fashions where everyone had those big uh, wigs, you know, like the white wigs and like the, the ridiculously detailed uh, clothes that they wore. Um, which, of course, you can see kind of in uh, modern vampire lore, like uh, Alucard and stuff like that, where they show vampires, they put them, they make them look like uh, Rococo aristocratic type people a lot of times. So, yeah, and then, uh, you know, 1900s, the, you have communism and then you have Bauhaus movement, which comes out of communism from Germany. And Hitler chased a lot of those people out, and they also came. They came here to the United States, and they gunked us up over here with their degenerate, uh, their degenerate, ugly styles of of building, you know. And and so there we have it. Yeah. But yep. yeah, maybe we should do some more about uh, about them as well. I was also thinking about a topic uh, that maybe I should talk more about like how much you know about uh um well i'm not going to talk about it now but for a future episode uh adam weishaupt 
I, I can't say I know anything. I've never heard of them before. Uh, ah, okay. Then I'll leave that one in a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> that will yeah. be my next topic then. Okay, great. Sounds yeah. cool, man. Okay. Well, with that, let's uh, kick it off. If you uh, would be so kind to give us a like, uh, share, and uh, subscribe, really appreciate it to help the channel grow. I think we uh, recently passed a thousand uh, subscribers. Um, and uh, Ivor, you're you're you have some uh, spe special com content coming for that. Is that correct? Or yeah, I um, I'm going to release content once I once I finally get it rendered so okay. that will come whenever it's it's ready great i don't know okay. when that will be but yeah every time <laughs> we cross a thousand my my idea is that every time we cross a thousand i'm going to release some bonus content that's uh slightly off topic just to just to see how people react you know and do something a little bit different but the the bonus stuff should not be construed as like a, a new trend or or anything like that's never to take the place of our normal content is just like a bonus on the side like when you go and eat your food and then you get some dessert afterwards like you don't need the dessert to be full but it it, it tastes good or maybe it tastes awful and you don't like it or maybe you even have an allergic reaction to it basically but yeah it doesn't take the place of food it's there in addition to the food basically so got it there we are okay yep. All right, guys. Well, thanks. Thanks for that. And uh, see you guys in the next one. Unus renovatus est a Christo regnante. Gaudete, te, gaudete, te, Christus est natus. Es Maria Virgine, gaudete.